Well, everyone, we get to finally talk about the iPhone 6s Plus and see how this phone holds up in 2023. Now, this iPhone actually ended up getting some very, very sad news last year. And we'll kind of talk about that throughout this video. But if you want to pick up some phones, I would recommend buying this year. The links will be down in the description. You can get them from there and you can help support the channel at the same time. Now, starting off with the outside of the iPhone 6s Plus, this iPhone, in my opinion, still, I mean, it doesn't feel like a cheap iPhone. It doesn't look like a super cheap iPhone either. It just kind of looks like a kind of outdated device. But I will say, with phones like the iPhone SE 3rd generation, it does kind of make this thing feel a little bit more modern in a way. Not because the iPhone 6S Plus looks too modern, but because the iPhone SE 3 is, you know, looking old and Apple's still selling it. So kind of one of those things to keep in mind. Now with the iPhone 6S Plus on the front, we have a 5.5 inch Retina, I guess it's just a standard IPS panel, and it's a 1080p display. And one thing I've said for many, many years now, that this panel, it's not bad. You know, it's not a bad screen on this phone. And I think for the last several years, I think, you know, it's definitely aged into a pretty decent phone. In fact, Apple is still selling a phone, you know, the iPhone SE 3, that has a lower resolution than this thing. And the iPhone 11 had a lower resolution screen and Apple just stopped selling that like four or five months ago. So I don't think the display on this thing is bad, but we do have pretty thick bezels around it, the top bezel and the bottom bezel. It's not a big deal, but again, it does kind of age this phone a little bit more. You also have that home button on the front with Touch ID too. Now, I've kind of been somebody who stated that I think the iPhone 6S Plus and the iPhone 6S in general were some of the most impactful iPhones of all time. They brought so much stuff to the table. For one, they brought Touch ID 2, which is cool, but they also brought Force Touch or 3D Touch on the display. That was a hardware feature where if you like press onto the display, it pretty much gives, gives you more options. Now, we kind of do that with a long press, but at this point, we had that type of capability, which was so cool. Now, on the bottom, we had a lightning port, which is awesome, a headphone jack as well, and this was kind of technically one of the last iPhones to have a headphone jack. I guess you could consider the iPhone SE 3 there. But that was another thing, the IO on this phone. It's actually kind of cool. And on the back, we have this standard aluminum back with a single camera setup on the top left, nothing in the center, no wireless charging, not even any IP certification. Although I did hear that this phone had some water resistance on it, but it wasn't uh, really certified ever at all. So pretty basic bare bones structure when it comes down to that device right there. But overall, what I'll definitely tell you is I think this phone still looks kind of okay. It doesn't look like a super old iPhone. It, you know, definitely has a very, very unique design. And whenever somebody looks at this phone, like you may feel a way about it. Like even before I started talking, when you saw this phone on the outside, you may have felt like, oh, like I remember a phone that looked like that. Personally, I actually did use the, this specific iPhone 6S Plus for a bit of time. I think it was back in 2016 or 2017. And I had a great time with it. I think it was a great phone. I didn't realize the power difference between the 6 Plus and the 6S Plus that I was upgrading from at the time. But this phone definitely had a lot of power at that moment. But now, I mean, it's definitely showing its age, but I still think, you know, it still has a little bit of power inside of it. Now, in the camera department, this thing, like I said before, has that single 12 megapixel standard camera and a 5 megapixel standard camera on the front. Now, you may look at those numbers or even look at this, you know, camera and be like, oh, you know, it's not that good of a camera anymore. But like I mentioned, back in 2016, and this was probably one of the biggest changes Apple has ever done from one camera to the other. So for one, they ended up increasing the megapixel count, not only from the back camera, but the front camera as well. And not just slightly, like they added an extra few megapixels on the back camera and on the front camera. And that in and of itself was a pretty big difference. But also, this is the big thing, this was the first iPhone to bring 4K video resolution that you can actually film with. So since then, I mean, we've had 4K at, you know, 60, but this phone did bring 4K at 30. And that was a massive thing Apple actually ended up doing. And still to this day, that is something that where we look at this phone, it's one of its biggest achievements. The fact that it was able to go ahead and bring that type of capability at that point. Now, I will definitely tell you this camera really isn't that great. I've done several camera comparisons since this thing has came out officially. I mean, I've compared this thing against, I think I compared this thing against the iPhone 7 plus 8 plus 10, like all these iPhones in general. And I'll definitely tell you, you know, I definitely do think the iPhone 6 Plus, 6 Plus camera as of right now isn't that great, but you know, it is what it is. You know, it's definitely not going to be great forever. And I still think this is a pretty, you know, it's a good camera for how old this phone is. Obviously it's not good anymore. Like I wouldn't recommend using it, but it brought a lot to that table. And I think this is still a very interesting device just from that perspective. 
So in terms of that, that kind of covers it up there. Now, in terms of the software and the longevity of this phone, this is another thing that's kind of important to say. Last year, this phone actually ended up pretty much getting discontinued with software. So just a few things. When we compare this phone against its predecessor, the iPhone 6 and 6S and the 6 Plus, those iPhones ended up being discontinued with software, I think back in 2019. So the fact that this thing ended up getting software support for like so many years is actually pretty crazy. So I do have to, you know, kind of think about about it in terms of that so i think that in and of itself is really cool but the issue that we have right now is that the iphone 7 plus got discontinued with software at the same time i feel like personally those iphones could have ended up getting support for a much longer period of time again there's really not too much we can do about it in that standpoint but i feel like with this iphone i mean that's pretty much the main reason why I wouldn't recommend buying it. It was the last in place to get, you know, drop support last year or so, or first in place if you think about it. So it makes sense why this iPhone got discontinued. I would have loved to have seen this thing last a little bit longer, you know, but I'm not complaining about it too much. I think this phone ended off on good terms. And I think as of right now, it's probably safe to say this phone isn't really supported mostly because it's not getting software support anymore. So in terms of that, that covers it up there. Now in the performance segment, this device has that Apple A9 chip inside of it with two gigabytes of RAM inside. So to kind of break a you know, few things down, for one, this device with its Apple A9 chip, it is a pretty outdated chipset. You know, it's definitely not the number one, you know, fastest chipset anymore, which is expected. That's kind of what happens when you have a, you know, device like this. But when you have something like an iPhone 7 Plus that ended up getting three gigabytes of RAM and all these other phones after it, it started to kind of, it didn't show its age super fast, but compared to what we have nowadays, it is definitely a slower phone. The biggest thing and the biggest takeaway I can tell you beyond than just even the performance itself is the smoothness factor of using gestures nowadays. With this phone, I mean to rely on that home button every time, it does kind of show its age and that's kind of the biggest problem I have with the iPhone 6S Plus is that you have to like click the home button for things to load or you have to click the home button to click out of an application and when compared to even an iPhone 10 on that gesture design, it is definitely a smoother, faster experience in that you know situation than going down this direction. So personally, that's kind of one thing to keep in mind. I will tell you though, it's still kind of a fast phone. Like if you're wanting to go ahead and play some games here and there, like it's going to be fine, but it isn't really until you start using this day to day. That's when you're going to realize things like it is definitely not that fast of a phone anymore. It's fast when you think about how old this phone is, but compared to the latest generation, even compared to phones that came out two or three years ago, it's definitely showed its age since then. It just so happened that this phone ended up getting software support for quite a bit of time. That's what made it seem like it was lasting a little bit longer and kind of a little bit more up to date. But I will tell you, it started, it started showing its age about a year ago, two years ago. So it's not a big deal that this thing got, you know, ended up getting drop support. But it is what it is. I still think it's kind of an interesting phone for how old this phone is, but it's definitely not that fast of a phone anymore. But it was the first iPhone to bring two gigabytes of RAM, so that's kind of another first for this device. So to kind of sum up this whole entire video, what I'll tell you is, I think the iPhone 6 Plus for the most part, it's a very interesting phone. I think it was one of the most impactful phones of all time, but it's one of those devices I would not recommend buying anymore. It makes very little sense to actually go and pick up this phone, mostly because it's not supported with software anymore. And even if it was, there are just so many better phones you can buy, like an iPhone 10 or iPhone 10, that are just slight, that are just slightly more expensive than this thing, but are miles and miles better than this thing. That it just makes more sense buying those devices than this one. So in terms of that, that kind of covers it up there. If you have any other thoughts or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would be so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.